Good morning. Good morning. And I welcome you all to worship here at United Lutheran Church. Welcome to our guests. We're glad to have you as a part of our worshiping community. We welcome those who join us through our radio broadcast each week and those who are joining us through Facebook Live. We're glad that we can reach out to so many people in so many different ways. A few announcements before we begin our worship service today. Um, we have a busy week, a lot of things on the schedule. However, one thing is coming off the schedule. Uh, United Lutheran Cleanup Day is canceled. So take note of that. That was supposed to be this coming Tuesday, but that's canceled. However, we do have uh, a picnic coming up, a picnic back to school barbecue and blessing on Wednesday, August 23rd from at 6 p.m. is the picnic in Riverside Park with worship at 6.30 and a blessing for the students and their backpacks. So it should be a fun evening at that time. Uh, on Thursday evening, there is a Youth Pride celebration. That's over at Calvary Lutheran Church. That's from 6.30 to 8 p.m. You'll also note uh, that uh, on page six at the bottom, we're looking for volunteers for our party on the blacktop. We have been doing this for quite a number of years and it's great loads of fun, but it takes some work to put it on. And so there's opportunities in a variety of ways to volunteer, to deliver door hangers, help set up for the party, help prepare the picnic meal box, uh, help during the party. So all kinds of things to happen. So if you'd like to sign up, there's a QR code, or you can go online and, and sign up. You'll note some upcoming events listed as well, a Phoenix backpack packing event, Wednesday, August 30th at noon. So that's coming up on our calendars. So take your bulletins home, put a, put a little note on your calendar for all these upcoming events. I would invite you now to please, oh, excuse me, one more thing. Our, uh, today our special music will be Mr. Alan Quee, who's gonna be playing Be Not Afraid. So we're looking forward to that. Would you please stand as we join together in our order for confession and forgiveness. Blessed be the Holy Trinity, one God, who greets us in this and every season, whose word never fails, whose promise is sure. Amen. Let us confess our sin in the presence of God and of our neighbors. Merciful God, we, we confess, confess that we have sinned. sinned. We, we have, have hurt our community. We, we have squandered your blessings. blessings. We, we have hoarded your bounty. In the name of Jesus, forgive us and grant us your mercy. Righteous God, we confess that we have sinned. We have failed to be honest. We have lacked the courage to speak. We have spoken falsely. In the name of Jesus, forgive us and grant us your mercy. God is a cup of cold water when we thirst. God offers boundless grace when we fail. Claim the gift of God's mercy. You are freed and forgiven in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. Our gathering hymn this morning is number 665 in your red hymns.
The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And also with you. And let us join together in our prayer of the day. God, God of all peoples, your, your arms, arms reach out to embrace all those who call upon you. Teach, teach us as disciples of your Son to love the world with compassion and constancy, that your name may be known throughout the earth, through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. Amen. Please be seated.
I think on behalf of all of us, we would like to say that was beautiful. Thank you for sharing your talent. The first le lesson today is from Isaiah chapter 56, verses 1 and 6 through 8. Thus says the Lord, maintain justice and do what is right, for soon my salvation will come and my deliverance be revealed. And the foreigners who join themselves to the Lord, to minister to him, to love the name of the Lord, and to be his servants, all who keep the Sabbath and do not profane it, and hold fast my covenant. These I will bring joy to my holy mountain and make them joyful in my house of prayer. Their burnt offerings and their sacrifices will be accepted on my altar. For my house shall be called a house of prayer for all peoples. Thus says the Lord God, who gathers the outcasts of Israel, I will gather others to them besides those already gathered. Word of God, word of life. Thanks be to God. Our psalm is 67, and we will read that responsibly. May God be merciful to us and bless us. May the light of God's face shine upon us. Let, Let your, your way be known, known upon, upon earth, earth, your saving health among all nations. Let the peoples praise you, O God. Let all the peoples praise you. Let, Let the, the nations be glad and sing for joy, for you judge the peoples with equity and guide all the nations on earth. Let the peoples praise you, O God. Let all the peoples praise you. The earth has brought forth its increase. God, God our own God, God, has blessed us. May God give us blessing, and may all the ends of the earth stand in awe. The second lesson is from the book of Romans, chapter 11, verses 1 through 2a, and 29 through 32. Paul writes, I asked then, has God rejected his people? By no means. I myself am an Israelite, a descendant of Abraham, a member of the tribe of Benjamin. God has not rejected his people whom he foreknew. For the gifts and the calling of God are irrevocable. Just as you were once disobedient to God, but have now received mercy because of their disobedience, so they have now been disobedient in order that, by the mercy shown to you, they too may now receive mercy. For God has imprisoned all in disobedience so that he may be merciful to all. Word of God, word of life. Thanks be to God. to them, listen and understand. It is not what goes into the mouth that defiles a person, but it is what comes out of the mouth that defiles. Then the disciples approached him and said to him, do you know that the Pharisees took offense when they heard what you said? He answered, every plant that my heavenly father has not planted will be uprooted. Let them alone. They are blind guides for the blind. And if one blind person guides another, both will fall into a pit. But Peter said to him, explain this parable to us. And Jesus said, are you also still without understanding? Do you not see that whatever goes into the mouth enters the stomach and goes out into the sewer? 
But what comes out of the mouth proceeds from the heart, and this is what defiles. For out of the heart come evil intentions, murder, adultery, fornication, theft, false witness, slander. These are what defile a person, but to eat with unwashed hands does not defile. Jesus left that place and went away to the district of Tyre and Sidon. Just then, a Canaanite woman from that region came out and started shouting, Have mercy on me, Lord, son of David. My daughter is tormented by a demon. But he did not answer her at all. And his disciples came and urged him, saying, Send her away, for she keeps shouting after us. He answered, I was sent only to the lost sheep of the house of Israel. But she came and knelt before him, saying, Lord, help me. He answered, It is not fair to take the children's food and throw it to the dogs. She said, Yes, Lord, yet even the dogs eat the crumbs that fall from their master's table. Then Jesus answered her, Woman, great is your faith. Let it be done for you as you wish. And her daughter was healed instantly. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise, Praise to you, O Christ. And please be seated. Well, friends, the end of the summer is rushing toward us as we join in a collective chorus of where did summer go? The consensus, especially in the upper Midwest, is that summer always goes by much too quickly. And I wonder about your summers. I wonder if it was filled with what you hope, if it missed the mark of your expectations, if it left you undone or somewhere in between. As I think about summer adventures, one of the more interesting adventures to me that people take on during the summer is to visit a category of structures classified as world's largest. Now you've no doubt been to some of these yourself. I think everyone in North Dakota and Minnesota has had a family photo taken in front of Babe and the Blue Ox in Bemidji. Or maybe like United's middle school students this summer, you visited the world's largest buffalo in Jamestown, North Dakota. And I confess that our family has a photo from years ago in front of the world's largest prairie chicken in Rotse, North. But, but, have you ever visited the world's largest pistachio in Alamogordo, New Mexico? a 30-foot green and white statue? Or maybe you've been waiting, yearning to see the world's largest ball of twine located 30 miles south of Cocker City, Kansas, where visitors can actually add to the ball, which currently weighs 27,017 pounds. Now, I'm not exactly sure what the draw is to these world's largest sites. Maybe it's because they're surprising, because they defy reasonable expectations, but also delight us in their absurdity. Maybe, just maybe, we like to believe that more than we had ever imagined could be possible. This summer in our worship, we've been following Jesus and his disciples through the Gospel of Matthew, and it's been our summer adventure and everywhere that we follow Jesus, he invites us to travel with him into a bigger faith, a larger view of God, a welcome that stretches further than we had imagined. Through Jesus, we're invited to see the world's largest love, the love of God for each one of us and this world. And we're invited not only to gaze at it in amazement, but to take our parts in loving bigger and wider than we had ever thought possible. My sermon today is going to focus primarily on the second half of today's Gospel reading, the story of the Canaanite woman in verses 21 through 28. 
But before we get there, we see that Jesus is once again being hassled by the religious leaders, the scribes and the Pharisees. And this time, it's about what it is that makes someone clean or unclean. Hebrew law had a lot to say about how to stay away from all things unclean. And the list of unclean things was long and it included everything from leprosy to shellfish. Somehow the religious elite had managed to take the liberating law of God and turn it into an oppressive force in people's lives. And Jesus responds to the scribes and the Pharisees, challenging them to reframe what is clean and what is unclean. Jesus is clear with them that it's, what's on the out, it's not what's on the outside that makes someone unclean, but it is what comes out of the mouth. In other words, what you say and what you do is the clearest reflection of what resides in your heart. Now, just when Jesus had finished this teaching about what is unclean, along comes a woman considered to be unclean, and she's challenging him. And I think she's a fascinating person in so many ways. She's one of only two people in the Gospel of Matthew described as having great faith. The other is the centurion in chapter 8, both of them Gentiles. Jesus saying that she has great faith is all the more interesting because just last week we saw as Jesus looked at his disciple Peter, a Jew and a clear insider in the Jesus circle, and said just the opposite to Peter, oh you of little faith. Secondly, she's a Canaanite woman, and this means that she's a part of the indigenous population of the land. When the Hebrews landed in the Promised Land, her people were already there. And Matthew's genealogy of Jesus in the first chapter of the Gospel includes two Canaanite women among Jesus' ancestors, Rahab and probably Tamar. And finally, she is persistent. She won't let go. She won't give up. As Matthew describes Jesus' encounter with this woman, we learn that Jesus and his disciples are in Gentile territory. And as they go about their business, this Canaanite woman approaches them and starts shouting at them, Have mercy on me, Lord, son of David. My daughter is tormented by a demon. And what happens next is both baffling and heartbreaking. Jesus hears, definitely hears the woman's cry, but he ignores her. This woman, however, is tenacious. She loves her daughter, she's desperate for help, and she's not afraid to make a scene. And so she keeps shouting until the disciples ask Jesus to please send her away. It's becoming a nuisance, embarrassing. Finally, Jesus looks at her and explains, I was sent only to the lost sheep of the house of Israel. And she falls to her knees, but still Jesus doesn't help. Instead, he answers her with words that cut no matter how we try to soften them. It's not fair to take the children's food and throw it to the dogs. Are there ways around the awfulness of this moment? Maybe. Sometimes we forget that being God incarnate also means that Jesus was fully human. Maybe Jesus is tired and he wants a break from the relentless demands of ministry. Or maybe he's fed up with people begging him for gifts and favors. Or maybe he's simply describing the reality of his mission as he understands it at that point in time. Maybe it's just a test. I think these are all possibilities, but whatever the reason, Jesus' response and what the woman says next is remarkable. She replies, yes, Lord, 
Yet even the dogs eat the crumbs that fall from the master's table. It's a brilliant response. And not the least of and not the least because it cuts to the very heart of Jesus' boundary-breaking, taboo-busting, division-destroying ministry of table fellowship. After all, Jesus is the Messiah who eats with tax collectors and prostitutes. He's the rabbi that breaks bread with sinners. The table is precisely where Jesus shows the world who God is and how God works again and again. And so it is the table that is precisely where this outsider calls Jesus out, as if to say to him, where's my place at this table? Isn't your goodness also good news for my daughter and me as well? And I wonder, in that moment, did everyone just hold their breath to see how Jesus would respond to her? Barbara Brown Taylor describes the next moment this way. You can almost hear the huge wheel of history turning as Jesus comes to a new understanding of who he is and what he's been called to do. Jesus who never loses a verbal contest to anyone else in scripture, sits back in amazement and concedes the argument to this audacious foreigner. Woman, he says, great is your faith. Let it be done for you as you wish. And her daughter is healed instantly. What a story. And it all has me asking, what does it mean for us, for you and I, to follow in the footsteps of Jesus who listens to the challenge of the outsider? Jesus humbles himself long enough to listen, really listen to her and learn from her a vulnerable outsider. And if this is what Jesus does, Should we be doing anything less? Jesus demonstrates here a kind of listening and learning that should humble us. Jesus has shown us that we can grow into a wider, more inclusive understanding of God's love by listening to the outsider. When I look at our congregation, United Lutheran, I'm grateful for the ways I see you welcoming and listening to the people who aren't in the pews or on our membership rolls, those who might be considered outsiders. Throughout the month of August, we've welcomed our community to come have lunch with us, to enjoy our gardens, and we've learned, we've been changed. We've learned that our neighbors are much more diverse group of people than our congregation. We've learned that being poor is hard, and we've learned from their gratitude and their struggles. For nearly two decades, our congregation has been sending groups to Tanzania, and without a doubt, these Tanzanians are our siblings in Christ, and yet in so many ways, their lives are so very different from our own. And we've learned from them a faith and generosity in the midst of poverty and hardship that in so many ways leaves us saying simply, great is your faith. This congregation sent a group of high school students and adults on a trip to Denver, Colorado in July. And they spent their time with diverse communities and they listened deeply. They learned from Tiger, who provides brand new shoes to people who are experiencing homelessness. They heard from indigenous elders about caring for the land. They saw God in them all. In all these ways and more, our lives are enriched and we experience the gospel in more expansive ways because of the insight of outsiders. As we learn to love others more expansively, especially those who are different from us, 
we're also learning to love ourselves more fully. As we open ourselves to those who are considered outsiders, we come to experience more fully the expansive love of God. For we are followers of Jesus, the one who opened his arms wider and wider until there was room for the whole world in them, who opened his arms wider and wider until he allowed his hands to be nailed open on a cross. In Jesus, God showed us the world's largest love. Jesus was changed by this Canaanite woman. And this kind of love, love that's open to the outsider, holds the power to transform us and this world. In the words of Mother Teresa, we have forgotten that we belong to each other. And this lapse of memory has caused deep fractures and allowed fear and hatred and division to infect our lives together. We've become disconnected from one another and from our very selves. But Jesus gives us another way. He invites us into relationships that can heal the brokenness of our lives by crossing dividing lines of race, gender, religion, orientation, ability, and class. Jesus leads us into relationships that are marked by love and connection and a belief in abundance. For Jesus always leads us to the world's largest love, a love that we know and experience through him. Amen.
And let us join in confessing our faith together in the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Confident that God receives our joys and concerns, let us offer our prayers for the church, those in need, and for all of creation. O oh God, your, your embrace encompasses all of humanity without distinction. Empower us with your spirit that we might rise to your calling to do likewise. God of grace, receive our prayer. You created the earth and all its inhabitants and declare it good. We ask that you would bring rain upon those areas of the United States and Canada that are now endangered by wildfires. Protect those in the southwest of flooding and damaging winds. Care for all, God of grace. Receive our prayer. You call leaders to bridge differences and practice generosity. Inspire all in authority to protect people in harm's way. Deliver those in bondage, support fair elections, provide care for military personnel and veterans, and show mercy to those for whom they have responsibility. God of grace, receive our prayer. You provide for those who suffer in body, mind, or spirit. Embrace people who have been rejected because of difference. Heal trauma caused by racism or prejudice. Shield any who are persecuted. Console the dying and heal the sick. Especially this day we uplift before you Eric Bakke, Phyllis Trelfa, Lyle Thorson, Oliver Hills, Lillian Degagne, Douglas Cohen, Lois Fontaine, Mariah Kleiner, John Hanson, Karen Pickett, and Nicolette Carview, God of grace, receive our prayer. O God, your journey with us in all of life's transitions, guide those who have lost loved ones, those beginning a new school year and those with a significant new diagnosis. Safeguard all your people, God of grace. Receive our prayer. Into your hands, O God, we commend all for whom we pray. In the name of the one who reconciles all creation to himself, Jesus Christ, our Savior. Amen. Amen. The peace of Christ be with you always. And also with you. Please share a sign of peace with those around you. You may be seated as we receive our morning offering.
Would the congregation please stand as we join in singing our offering song? Sustain us with these gifts of your creation and multiply your graciousness in us that the world may be fed with your love. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give our thanks and praise. It is with thanksgiving that we remember that in the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread, gave thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples saying, take and eat, this is my body given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. Again, after supper, he took the cup, gave thanks and gave it for all to drink saying, this cup is new covenant in my blood, shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this for the remembrance of me. Gathered at the table of the Lord, let us pray as Jesus has taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not to temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. These are the gifts of God for the people of God. Come for all are welcome. You may be seated and the ushers will direct you forward. And with those assisting with communion, come forward at this time.
Please rise. Now may the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ strengthen you and keep you in God's grace this day and always. Amen. Amen. We thank you, generous God, for the refreshment we have received at your banquet table. Send us now to spread your generosity into all the world through the one who is our dearest treasure, Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. Amen. Receive the blessing. The God who calls us across the cosmos and speaks in the smallest seed, bless, keep, and sustain you now and to the end of the age. Amen. Go in peace. Christ is with you. Thanks be to God. And we're joining in our closing hymn number 886 in your red hymns. Yeah. Mm-hmm.